A new budget CPU has hit the shelves. Intel's N97. So it's between the N95 and N100, right? Right? No, this CPU's naming is completely balked. Thanks Intel. Weird naming aside, is this the new budget master? And where does it really fit in? But before that, the EaseUS Data Recovery Wizard app is very simple to use and can help you recover your lost data, whether it's on your internal drive, USB storage, or SD card. It also has support for repairing damaged photos and videos. Check out the free trial in the video description to find out what it can recover on your storage drives. The biggest problem I had with Intel's N95 and N100 is that the graphics performance was below the previous generation's top budget Pentium CPU. Well, that all changes with the N97, and both games and emulators benefit nicely. Intel's N97 is still a 4-core CPU wrapped in this nice looking box made from high quality plastic which is solid AF. Looks good, huh? I don't even mind the blue LED below. Although, if you want to turn it off, no, no, it's not in the BIOS. The Blackview MP80 Mini PC can be found on Amazon for just $180 US, which is a very competitive price as you'll soon see. The MP Mini is very tiny and it's pocketable too. Easy to throw if you get upset. It comes with a power supply, HDMI, manual, modern amount, and screws. Since it's so small, the ports are around the mini to give you a decent amount of them. The front has a power button, the right side has triple USB 3 5 gigabit. This mini is powered by a barrel jack connector on the back. There's also a dual gigabit LAN and an audio jack. On the left side is Triple HDMI 2.0 for up to 3 4K 60Hz monitors. Ok, let's have a look inside it. The MP80 has annoying glued on rubber feet that need to be removed before you have access to the screws. And opening it is an exercise in frustration. Call me a nut job, but I think mini PCs should be easier to open, and this one is anything but. Ok, once the lid is popped off, there's a blue LED strip, another 4 screws, and another annoying amount of time spent trying to pop off the second cover. Oh, it's just the CPU cooler. Great, have to pop out the board as well. Watch out for the wireless cables. After much wrestling with it, you can see there's an M.2 2242 SATA drive. Underneath it is the M.2 Wi-Fi card, and the CMOS battery is right next to it. So, disassembly. Definitely not easy or fun. Ok, moving on. That's pretty much with all these minis, Windows 11 Pro is pre-installed, but testing Ubuntu off a USB drive, well, it was all good. Before we hit the game and emulator comparisons, let's quickly check out the benchmarks. Intel's N97 beats the N100 and N95 in single core. It's just over 3% ahead of the best performing N100 and 7% behind the much pricier N305. At default settings, the N97 does pretty well in multi-core, but I wanted to see if upping the N97 to 30 watts made a difference to performance, and there's a slight bump up of almost 3%. This pretty much matches the best performing N100. The N305 is far ahead thanks to having double the CPU cores with a total of 8. And in video encoding, same deal as multi-core really. Good performance out of the box, and with a BIOS tweak, near the top. 3D Mark was the big surprise. The N97 is finally a chip on the list to beat the previous gen Pentium. Just like the TA Plus Mini PC I reviewed earlier this year, this one has the onboard LPDDR5 set at DDR4 speeds. You'll need to go to the BIOS and up it to the DDR5 4800 speed to get peak performance. There's almost an 8% increase just by changing the memory speed to what it should be. And that's a 28% improvement over the previous generation Pentium, and a 45% increase over the best N100. Pretty damn big performance gains on the GPU there. And it's a similar deal in DX12. Not far off the i3 N305, just 5% behind. When you think about the price of the N97 being similar to an N100, game and emulator benchmarks become even more impressive. In Grand Theft Auto 5, the N97 has a much higher frame rate at 720p, almost doubling in some areas, and at 1080p, it's not too far off the N100. Come on, 
Since it did a good job there, I wanted to try League of Legends. In a 1080p highest preset, it almost stays above 100 FPS all the time. Cool! Valorant is a CPU heavy esports title, and now with more graphics performance from the N97, it's the CPU getting bottlenecked all the time. Still, the overall FPS has gone up on the N97. PS2 emulation on the N100 maxed out at 720p in most cases, but with the N97, a bunch of games will run full speed at 1080p, like Tekken Tag Tournament. Gran Turismo 4 is one of the hardest games to emulate, and the N100 needs to be at 480p native resolution for full speed, but the N97 almost gets there at 720p with some small frame drops. And unfortunately 1080p was just too much. Needs more single core CPU power for this one. It's also the CPU holding back the N97 with a tough to emulate Need for Speed Most Wanted. But 720p was pretty decent if you don't mind the slightly lower frame rate. With Mario Kart Wii, you can see the N97 has an easy time holding 60fps at 720p, but 1080p resolution is just too much for it and it runs too slow. Alright, so Intel's N97 in this mini has a similar idle power draw at 9 watts. For maximum power draw, 31 was recorded by default, and 32 when the power limit was increased. That's only 1 watt difference, so you might as well enable it for slightly better multi-core performance. CPU temp only varied by 1 degree with the power limit increase and topped out at 82C, which is fine. And I'm happy to report the MP80 isn't a noisy mini PC. It holds up well against the competition. Like many of the budget SSDs, the temperature sensor on this one didn't move no matter what I did. So I don't know its peak temp. But I can tell you I didn't come across any thermal throttling during my tests, and that's not too surprising when it's an M.2 SATA drive. Here are the options in the BIOS that some might find useful. So to summarize, the Blackview MP80 has great performance using Intel's N97. That means better single core CPU and much better iGPU. The pricing is close to many N100 minis with a similar 512GB storage 16GB RAM configuration. Build quality and aesthetics are nice on this one and it's pretty tiny. But the BIOS is gimped out of the box. Whatever you do, at least increase RAM speed to its default of 4800. And as mentioned before, the LED can't be turned off in the BIOS. Upgrading the storage drive or Wi-Fi is not fun, and it would have been cool if this one was USB-C powered. But you can't have everything. Or can you? No you can't. Overall, the N97 is the Intel budget CPU I would have liked to see release way back in late January when I first reviewed the N100. This one kicks Intel's previous generation best CPU, the Pentium N6005, right in the sack. Better late than never, right? And luckily, the price is around the same. I've reviewed a couple of Blackview Mini PCs and wasn't too impressed, but this one is a pretty cool Mini if it meets your needs. But if you don't need the extra graphics power and want something even cheaper, then why not check out my top 5 Mini PCs under $170 right here. Cheers.